this episode of Wrecked. When a dumpster crashes the gate at a construction site. It was hanging in a precarious spot and we weren't sure if what it was holding on was gonna stay. Bill, Joey, and Jameson got to muscle the monster out of the hole. I'm gonna winch the widgets out of it. Without losing the mistress in the process. I'm very worried that she's gonna pull the mistress in. I'm not letting my girl go. After 30 years, O'Hare is moving to a new HQ, but there's a problem. I want to hear the phones ring, Mike. Bing, ling, ling, that's not the phone ringing. The phone lines go down during the switch, and as the minutes tick by, Bill's business is on the brink. Multi-million dollar empire, and I have no effing phones coming in. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare Towing with his wife, Marcy, his brother, Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next big wreck. Chicago. The city's streets are swarmed with traffic. That means just one thing, wrecks. O'Hare has been cleaning up the streets of Chicago for 45 years. Owner Bill's father, Jack Graziana, opened the Mannheim Road location 30 years ago. The facility that we're in, my father built back in the uh, late 70s. The aging facility hasn't been able to handle the rapid growth of the company, and it's time for some new digs. This new facility is in Downers Grove. It's a great facility. It's almost four acres. It's 45, 50,000 square feet. Marcy, Bill's wife and O'Hare's vice president, has been in charge of the construction. Very exciting because it has always been our goal is to build a place of our own, you know, something that take O'Hare to the next license. level. After months of work, it's almost time to make the big move. I mean, we've been waiting for almost, what, a year and a half now? And we're finally there, and the facility itself, it's great. The new location is a heavy-duty upgrade to O'Hare's current dilapidated digs on Mannheim Road. It's something that Marcy and I spent a lot of time planning and building, and now it's time to see how it works. So basically, it's kind of like a report card and a test drive all at the same time. You know, we bought the Ferrari, and now it's time to drive it. It's 6 a.m. on the morning before the move, and O'Hare gets a call. Base to 903, start heading up towards 294 at the construction site. We just got a call about a dumpster that it, uh, fell off a crane in Chinatown. I'm pretty excited about it. It's time to get my hands dirty. I am so mentally excited, but physically tired. Getting that wake-up call, like, just like, come on. We are in Chinatown. There's just sushi down here. It's awesome. Do you think they're stretching? This is us. Bill and Joey arrive on the scene, and now it's time to check out the damaged dumpster. I'm Bill. Mike, Bill. Here it is. The dumpster is suspended precariously on the corner of a steel I-beam 10 feet above the basement floor. The guy came to pick up the dumpster to put the hook on it and went straight up with it. It was too much. Couldn't hold the uh, 30,000 pounds. I think this unit's a lot heavier than we first thought, but uh, we'll get it. It's actually kind of exciting. My loins are tingling right now. The situation is extremely dangerous. At any moment, the dumpster could come crashing to the ground, crushing anything or anyone standing in its way. So much for the, oh, it's going to be an easy job. The concern is, is we don't really know how heavy it is, and it's been raining for two days, and whatever's in that dumpster is a lot heavier than what it was when it first started. I think we have enough horsepower to raise it. But if the outriggers collapse, 
It's a long way to the floor. This dumpster is heavy. Gravity's going to us. Maybe we should just grab the front and let the bottom fall in. That's going to be loud as hell. I'm all about that. I think that's what we should try to do. Because if that's what we are going to do. Bill's plan is to attach a medium weight chain to the dumpster, pull it off the steel I-beam, and allow it to drop to the basement floor. We're gonna use the 3 h chain just to hop skip that corner off because we're very worried about any of the weight when that dumpster goes over that she's gonna pull the mistress in and not let my girl go. I'm gonna grab it with the drag and I'm gonna winch the widgets out of it. I got a plan. All right, my plan might have a few flaws. Bill's plan didn't work. The medium weight chain snapped, and now they need to come up with plan B. Put, put this one there, put this one here, put on two spots on the front. Bill decides to roll the dice. He will attach two full strength boom cables to the dumpster and nudge it off the I-beam. The dumpster will plunge to the ground, hopefully not overturning the truck in the process. Scoot it forward just enough to get it, the back corner unpivoted off the I-beam, pull the nose up and dump everything into the hole. Jameson arrives on the scene. He's here to provide backup for Bill and Joey. You can't get an easy stop. I don't want you really under there. It's trying to be the safest way possible, and I know exactly what to do. He just doesn't want me to do it. Maybe it's a little dangerous. Hey, those chains are going to pop. They're not big enough. Stay back over here. I'm going to be up there. This one's coming out no matter what. Joey operates the boom by remote, while Jameson mans the safety switch. Don't hesitate. The minute you hit that switch, boom, trying to pick this sucker up. Just watch me. Starting to winch. Coming up, the mistress is on the hook with a 30,000 pound anchor. We're very worried that she's gonna pull the mistress in. And later, Bill's at the breaking point when O'Hare's big move doesn't go as planned. Somebody will get fired over something like that right now. A dumpster loaded with cement is hanging on the ledge of a collapsed building foundation in Chinatown. It was hanging in a precarious spot. Bill and the boys try to pull it free, but their chains weren't up to the test. Now they've got one more shot to put two heavy boom cables on the dumpster and yank it from the ledge. This one's coming out no matter what. But if anything goes wrong, the falling dumpster could drag the mistress down the drain. Starting to winch. off the ledge and th three quarters of the load out of it, we're gonna overturn it, jump it, and we'll level it out and set it in the alley. It is hard being this good, you two. I give out lessons. Seated lessons? Yeah, pretty much. You're lucky I didn't put the Superman cape on. I got it on the dash. 
they readjust the winch lines, hoist up the dumpster, and empty the rest of the contents. Now it's time to swing the dumpster to solid ground. A dump. Is down. The last step is to upright the dumpster in a very tight spot. We don't even have three no, feet. No, I, I got this. Everything's got to be done mid air. I wanted to roll it over and then pick it up and center it. I worked it out in my head. I'll, I'll do it again. It worked. If we do what you just said, we're going to put the dumpster through out in the garage here. I'll show you what we're going to do. I have a plan. I guess my plan is flawed. Are you sure it's going to work? This is your idea. Mine is done already. Is it? Bill's plan is tougher than it looks. First, they'll use both boom lines to spin the dumpster from the building foundation into the alleyway. Next, they remove one of the boom lines and lift the dumpster vertically so they can upright it in midair. Then, they rotate the dumpster on its axis, securing the second boom line halfway through to complete the rotation. You like it? Finally, they place the dumpster back on solid ground. Bill's plan worked. The dumpster has been successfully uprighted without doing damage to the nearby buildings. You know, it worked out all right. It wasn't the prettiest thing. The record, my plan would have worked, though. Two days later, okay. it's just a good thing I'm out here. There's a lot of oh, there's everywhere. <laughs> Thanks, guys. No problem. Normally, O'Hare would be responsible for cleaning up the massive mess. Luckily, the construction company will step in and finish the job. I'm taking that as a win. I mean, I thought we did it great. It was a little bit of a pain in the ass. But Joey's disappointed that his plan wasn't put into action. There was nothing wrong with my plan. Bill just didn't want to go with it because he knew I was right. Absolutely nothing wrong with the Hot Shots plan. But the day's not over for Bill. Tomorrow is the big move, so he checks in at the new location to confirm that O'Hare is ready. Oh, my god. I guess I have to explain the difference between garbage in the can and around the can. I realize it's just a tow yard, okay. but I can't stand garbage laying around. Could you please embrace the project, OK? The last thing I need in my day with all the other stuff that I got going on, but you know, getting tow trucks to people that need them. On top of that, now I have to worry about buildings and computers and drywall. Did they get your light fixed in here yet? No, for some reason it got skipped in the whole process. What? Yes. This internal stuff in the office is driving me absolutely up the wall. I don't know how much more I can take. i can tell you right now, this is Marcy's job. I'm half colorblind and I gotta pick out colors. The most critical part of the move is making sure the phone lines work at the new location. Phone lines are in. They're ready. For, I'm waiting for a phone system. Well, she promised me she'd get back to me this afternoon. Why don't you call her back and pretend that she's waiting on a tow truck? And if I'm not there in 15 or 20 minutes, I'm the jag off. I want to hear the phones ring, Mike. Ding, ling, ling. That's not the phone ringing. Call her now. OK. Please. Coming up. On the morning of the move, a major complication could cost O'Hare big time. The number you have reached, not in service. Whoa! And later, Bill returns to his old stomping grounds to discover that the move is much harder than he expected. I'm a little emotional over it. Today is finally the day for the big move and the entire O'Hare team is on the hot seat. I'm way more nervous and worried about it than I thought I was gonna be. I took an up and operating business that has the phone lines going to the same place for 32 years, 
and said, okay, today's the day that I just want to pull the plug. Doyle is running the phone switch over. I'm currently copying all tracker data from not up and running. So the fate of O'Hare towing is in his hands. I'll be real happy when everything's just done. Joey's on his way to the shop now. He's a little late this morning. We just woke him up. Joey is manning O'Hare's old location. So if something goes wrong, he'll be there to pick up the pieces. You can't handle this kind of pressure. It's early okay. in the morning. Well, Joe and I, we're, we're holding down the board over here. Ooh, Although headquarters is moving to Downers Grove, Joey will continue to run the shop on Mannheim Road. I'm staying here, and Bill, Marcy, and all of dispatch are out of my hair. Very nervous. I've had butterflies in my stomach for two weeks now. This is a very risky maneuver for us because our whole business reputation is on the line of the phone being answered. I'm just hoping it goes well so you're in a good mood. The big switch is scheduled for 8 a.m. on the dot. It's supposed to be at 8 o'clock, and we still don't have no phones, so we're working on it probably within about five minutes or so. Moment of truth. Are you at the shop right now? Yeah, standing by by the phones. Over, farm team. This is Wade Crawford to the parent facility. Are you still getting phones? Hey, time for this. This driver's calling in. Okay. Bill's freaking out already. Hey, it's 801, guys. Is there going to be like a... Bell or a buzzer or anything? No. It should just happen? Hey, just phone, man. Still testing. Shouldn't the phone be transferred? I think that's trying to call. Are you still on schedule right now? How's this looking? Yeah. I'm getting tracker running here. I've got data moving. We've got to do some magic on this end before I can get tracker working. Come on, so we're five minutes, five minutes behind? Five minutes behind? Unacceptable. Yeah. Get rid of these phone lines. The traffic has been diverted. They just did the switch now. The phones have been turned off at the old location. Now the question is, will they ring at the new one? Oh, ring on that? Right now we got nothing. So if you're getting rings, we're not getting them here. No, I'm not getting them here either. I'm worried about. Uh, we're going to call on our cell phone right now. I'll let you know. Gene, give me a call. Phone lines just shut down and we don't have our, any of our phone lines coming in. The number you have reached. No, you no. Whoa! We got a problem. The phones are down at both locations and O'Hare is not getting any calls. Calls are getting routed here, so the like numbers that they just tried testing hit our PBX, but our PBX rejected. So just trying to find out what that means. 5051 oh, five, and 52 are all coming up not in service right now. I don't need you calling me, telling me that right now. I'm aware of what's going on. We're working on a routing issue right now. Freaking out. Freaking out. Thank God I'm not even by him. He's probably a cranky jerk. Hey, somebody will get fired over something. I it right now. I'm just, you might, you just might want to just shut it. Easily 90% of our business comes through phone lines, so to have them go down is bad. Precious minutes are ticking away, and Bill wonders if O'Hare is here to stay. Coming up, the clock's ticking, and Bill waits in O'Hare raising agony while the phone switch falls flat on its face. Multi-million dollar empire, and I have no effing phones coming in. Today, at O'Hare's new headquarters, the phone service has been transferred from the old location, but there's a problem. The number you have reached is not in service. Whoa! The switchover was scheduled for 8 a.m., and 20 minutes later, the phones still aren't ringing. Multi-million dollar empire, and I have no effing phones coming in. 4862 is that number. Whatever is 4862, please change. 847 455 7750. It's 847 455. There it is. That's real. That is not me. Come on. Say hello here. First phone call. Good morning, O'Hare Towing. This is Aitha. How can I help you? Yeah, Aitha, this is Joe. 5-0 is going through to you. All right, bye. Bye-bye. 
Nice, it went through. Thank you. Ooh, decompress now. <laughs> More than one line. Line one is a toe. The phones are working. Finally, the O'Hare crew can breathe a sigh of relief. I felt the death stare from behind me from Bill. <laughs> <laughs> With the new location up and running, Bill takes Marcy back to the shop to revisit some old memories. It's sad. It's very sad. <laughs> I feel like I'm at a wake. Very, very odd to see this place empty. Yeah, it's weird. I don't like it. When we first started dating, this one office was all of corporate headquarters for O'Hare Towing right here. It's a little bit more sad than I thought it was going to be. I'm a little... <laughs> I'm a little emotional over it. For the last 32 years, there's always been someone sitting in this seat to answer the phone and say hello, hair. This place always had a certain amount of adrenaline, energy, buzz, you know, kind of all the time, and we killed it. His whole, basically, from childhood up, has been spent here. I mean, our, our girls have run around here, and Joey ran around here, and, and of course, this was the last place Papa was. There's so many memories and so much time here. I think it's surreal to move out of here because you're, you're leaving a little bit behind and I think that's really getting to them. It's different and it's weird and it's make, making me a little sad. I, uh, I didn't think it would bother me and, and it's, it's bothering me. They said what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I don't know about that right now. You know, what's next? The, oh here, Tony doesn't need me? I can't take any more. I'm staying here, I'm the North Lake Terminal Manager. Yeah, now it's Joe's turf. Basically, it's Joe's clubhouse. The tyranny's over, and the reign of Joe's coming. This is a chance for him to grow up and step up a little bit. You know what, I'm throwing a huge party tomorrow. Here? Me and the drivers, we're just gonna have this like huge party. Yeah. I'll probably go rent a pony. Oh. And a clown? No, I, I hate clowns. <laughs> Raise the roof, Joe.